Now, as I talked about in the beginning, when we're working on improving your point range, we also need to improve your stability. We definitely don't want to start creating more space if there's actually no control. This is a really good time to remind you that stability and strength are not the same thing. Stability is more that subconscious control that we have. So we need to train this a little bit separately than doing your strengthening exercises to build up that kind of brute conscious muscle control. So we're going to go through a series of exercises to challenge your stability in slightly different ways. Now our balance and proprioception comes from quite a few different places. A lot of us use the majority through our vision, about 70% is coming from your eyes perceiving where you are in the world and your brain making decisions based on that. However, we also have these little fluid filled canals in our inner ear. You also have little cells in the surfaces of your joints and in your skin to sense where you are in space. So what we want to do with our balance exercises is take away at least one of those sensors to challenge the others. So Sarah's going to have feet very, very close together and then close the eyes. Now she's been practicing these for a little while, so she's looking okay. Some of you will find that you tend to sway around a lot as soon as you close your eyes. This is fine. In the beginning, make sure you're close to a bar or a wall so you can catch yourself if that happens. Yep. Open those eyes. Then we can try challenging the stability in a slightly different way. So try looking over your right shoulder and over the left, perhaps looking up and down. Good. and perhaps taking one ear to the shoulder or the other shoulder. Now she's looking quite nice and stable, but if you're finding this a little bit tricky, just keep doing it with both feet on the ground. If you like, you can take one foot in front of the other. This we're just narrowing the base of support and go through all of those positions again. So try closing your eyes. That's it, and you'll feel a little bit more topply. Just try that again. And it's good because as we take out your vision, we've made the base of support smaller, you'll actually have to focus on feeling more through the feet, feeling more through the joints, noticing where your head is in space. Beautiful. And then open the eyes. Try looking over each shoulder. Good. Try looking up and down. And try taking the ear to the shoulder. Now I find different people struggle with different elements. Some people always fall over when they look over their shoulder, others when they look up. So see which it is for you. And then try on the other side to see if it's different when you have a lead leg with your right or your left. Good, it actually looks much more stable with the left foot front. And then eyes open, looking at the different directions. And you can do multiple variations and multiple repetitions of any one of these that you find a little bit more difficult. You can also do it standing on a single leg or introducing an unstable platform. So if we use a pillow, a folded up yoga mat or a foam block like this, you can stand on it with the feet very close together. This will create a little bit more unstable surface. So we're looking at that subconscious control that's happening faster than you could think. Try again closing the eyes. Good, and noticing much more of a postural sway there. We're having to be a little bit more challenged. Good, eyes open. Try the different positions of the head. Good. And you may even try a little bit of an arm swing as well. Beautiful. Then try with one foot in front of the other. Good work. Make sure you're still breathing nicely. Try the head movements. Good. So you want to see if you can identify the ones that are the trickiest and simply practice those a little bit more. Beautiful. Then try with the left foot front. 
And there are unlimited variations of these. You can try closing your eyes and doing head movements. You can try all kinds of different surfaces. You can take them into single legs. You can see as you start to introduce a couple of things together, it becomes quite tricky. It's also quite nice to introduce throwing a ball against a wall, things like that. So you're a little bit more responsive rather than generating it from internally. Beautiful. Perfect. And jump down off there. So make sure that as you start improving your range, you start actually doing some stability work even on flat. We're also going to do some more work on rise as well. So just standing in parallel, slowly rise up with double legs and see if you can find your balance in that position. A lot of the times we only do those rises at the bar and then lower back down. Beautiful. And again, rising up. And then while you're at the top, see if you can do the turn over one shoulder and back to the center, the other shoulder. Beautiful. Try looking up and down. Good. Lower the heels, do a little bit of a plie, give it a rest in between. Then go back up and maybe try doing your eyes closed. Or even if eyes closed is a little tricky, just try looking through your eyelashes. Just to remove, that's it, a little bit of that visual feedback and really get the feeling for where you are in space without so much vision. This is really good to practice, especially as often when we're dancing, lower the heels down. Often when we're dancing, we're on a stage and all of the rest of the audience is blacked out. A lot of students find that they're fine practicing in the studio with lots of bright light and visual feedback, but once we get onto stage, we become a little bit shaky. A lot of people think that that's their nerves, but actually I find often it's that we haven't practiced enough with less visual feedback. So this is something that I really want you to practice as you get more range, is making sure you have stability at the end of range and on flat.